What's up guys, we made it. This is Uptown Hustle, Jamaica edition. Take a look at this. Take a look at this for the vlog. For the vlog. <laughs> when in Jamaica, guys. Yeah. So <laughs> it's that medical. So the thing is, is it's um. That's fire. Yeah. It was. It was that. <laughs> this is this is vlog shit right here. <laughs> it was called Scotchies. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Yeah, but they had some they had some good food. We chilled at the bar. Same food, everything, bro. Yeah. Same thing. Just... My professional situation, I guess, right now, is I look at it three ways. It isn't I have three things going for me, core businesses. First core business is venture capital. I have real estate and I have media. And they each play a totally different role. So for me, the most important one is real estate. Mm -hmm. Because it's foundational and it generates cash and it's weatherproof to market cycles is kind of the founder and i want to be spending more time on it but i'm not i have the media side of my business which is a lot of vlogging and actually a lot of the media stuff comes out of my own pocket you also monetize it through speaking speaking if you're a good speaker ends up being a pretty lucrative stream right. and then that feeds books i have a book deal i'm hosting a show for so now i'm going to be on tv what's, what's the show? it's called hustle so it's a show that they they follow me as I advise different companies and like help them grow. And then lastly, the last bucket is venture capital because for me, I love startups. That's like my DNA. So I want to make sure that I'm investing in the companies that I feel are going to go and make it a, a big, they're going to be big businesses. They're going to be the true field farms, the, all these big companies in the future. I want to get a piece of them now. What up, Graham? What up, what up, what up, big up. Some homies. Yeah. So, so good. Eating food. it up. Show them, show them what it is. At the festival. Okay. 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 Hey. You know what I'm <laughs> Got it. <laughs> there is a lot of value to having a little bit of time to work on something because tight time is efficient time. And it's actually interesting because these days, you know, sometimes I have so much time that I squander my time and I'm just like, ah, oh, and I'm just lollygagging because, you know, before, like when I'm busy, that's actually when I'm most efficient, which is strange because you think if you had more time. And so I told myself, oh man, if only I had more time, but I can remember when my, when my time was tight. If you actually take advantage of those two, three hour buckets, bam, 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 bam. You're getting stuff done, you fall in this rhythm, what happens? That baby that you're growing begins to grow and begins to get nurtured, right? And over time, as that thing is nurtured, eventually you get to the point where it costs you more money to stay at your job than to leave your job. You can think of all the reasons why things are stacked against you and you might come up with a really good argument on paper for why you shouldn't do a thing. If despite that you still have a calling to do a thing, the fact that you even have that intrinsic motivation to do whatever it is that you want to do, that's fascinating, right? Because that means that your spirit is yearning. That's almost like our proof to ourselves. The fact that you can, can't even be motivated and can't even envision you doing that thing is proof to yourself that it's waiting for you on the other side. John's having trouble. <laughs> John's having trouble. <laughs> I 
Everything looks strategic and successful when you look back at it, if it panned out. But in the moment, oftentimes, at least for me, it didn't feel like an opportunity per se. My acumen was not yet that, that well developed. For me, you have to act on a feeling.